Cokies. The family of Cokies. The PNM family. I want to feel your love as I come to this microphone. Let me hear you. Let me hear you more than that. Trinidad and Tobago is listening to you. The country is watching to you. But ladies and gentlemen, let me begin where I should begin by saying to God Almighty, thank you for the beautiful weather and the beautiful people and the beautiful gathering that we have here tonight. To our Muslim brothers and sisters, we say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah alaikum in this beautiful season of Ramadan. To our Hindu brothers and sisters, we say, Sita Ram. To our many Christian brothers and sisters, we say thank you for the prayers of wishing the blood of Christ from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet. Ladies and gentlemen, our country is blessed. To the PNM, we say how good it is to receive so much love. And to the people of Trinidad and Tobago, we say salvation is close at hand. Ladies and gentlemen, an election has been called. Is it far away? It's 10 Sundays away from today. When you think about it in the context of the number of Sundays ahead of us, it doesn't seem that long. And Trinidad and Tobago has on offer, on choice, on display, a political leader who stands at the helm and says, I, Dr. Keith Rowley, public servant that I am, geologist that I am by profession, but politician that I am by practice, I stand before 40 men and women. And I look to my left and I look to my right and I know that I have the support of these 40 men and women of whom I am but one, of whom Randall Mitchell is but one, of whom Stuart Young is but one, of whom Marlene MacDonald is but one, being only those that I've seen through the blinding lights I have here tonight. But ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Rowley knows that he can stand on a stage in front of his people who come out to support him with full heart and say to Trinidad and Tobago, these men and women stand with me and we are a part of something. We are a part of a belief. Because right now, as we march 10 Sundays to the prize, to the battle and then prize. As we do that, we assess the lay of the land. And Randall has given us some of that. Where are we as a nation, ladies and gentlemen? Where are we after a government that has spent 15 years of money, if you take every budget, prior to 2010 and you add it all up together this government has spent more money than 15 years of years back to back some say close to 400 billion dollars they like to tell us oh it's only 300 million dollars well i can tell you the pnm in its time spent 273 billion dollars our two terms, we spent $273 billion, and this government in five years has spent well over $350 billion. Ladies and gentlemen, reach into your pockets, feel into your purses, check your back pocket, your front pocket, check wherever you have cash, and see if you see your share of 300 plus billion dollars. Look into the drains, look into the canals, look onto the streets, check in the potholes, check in the beds that don't exist in the hospital. 
Checking the police stations, checking the courts that are overflowing, checking the community centers that have no lights, check the overgrown grass in your con constituencies, check the buckets filled with mosquitoes, and see if you find the money. Measure every box train in Trinidad and Tobago and ask yourselves if you can see that equal to the money. Those of you who have not received water for six months and are watching the advertisements that say your government is working for you. And here Wasa tell you that it was a long dry season for six months. Ask them since when the dry season was for six months and why your water has been re-diverted. And ladies and gentlemen, check for the flyovers and the walkovers from our communities, like in my own constituency in Bacadé, or in Bayshore, or wherever it may be. See how your children cross the roads. Our elderly in Pleasantville, right here in Coquille that wait on bus transport, check and see if the buses that used to come prior to 2010 still coming for you. So ladies and gentlemen, if this is 2015 and they spent 15 years of money and they tell you this is your government working for you, do you want that government to continue working for you is the question. But should it just be that we are so sick of the UNC that we now wish to just change governments? It can't only be that, ladies and gentlemen. It can't only be that we are so sick of corruption and wastage and bacchanal after bacchanal after bacchanal because the UNC bacchanal does not cure itself by investigation, conclusion, and solution. It cures itself by a second bacchanal knocking out the first bacchanal, and a third bacchanal knocking out the second bacchanal, and a fourth bacchanal knocking the third bacchanal out. And Trinidad and Tobago, the PNM is saying to you, is saying that we offer a solution. Number one. We will not be a part of the UNC Bacchanal. I am the public relations officer of the People's National Movement and I have had nothing to say about the Bacchanal. And my response given to me by one of my constituents is, tell them, Faris, you weren't there in the courtship. You weren't there in the engagement. You weren't there in the marriage. You weren't there on the honeymoon night. You weren't there when they had children. So you're not going to attend the funeral. And after we get over point number one, we say that point number two is where I started. We have a leader operating under a philosophy, operating together with 40 people and 15 more to come in the government senate and 3,600 more to come on state boards and communities to operate in tandem with that who is able to stand up and say it is the PNM, that entity which has been around for 60 years standing on the shoulders of past servants and volunteers as we do that offer a prescription. That's number two. And number three that we offer is a policy. And boy, is the UNC anxious to see our policy. And boy, do they try to trivialize our policy. And they laugh and they say, Vision 2030 is nothing, while they live in the value of Vision 2020 cut short right now. Because if they didn't have the institutions that we created, the structures that we created, where would they be now? And so we say, ladies and gentlemen, by way of policy, that our manifesto, our contract with the people will be produced for public consumption shortly. And what we do, ladies and gentlemen, by way of our fourth prescription, is that we, Randall and I, and Neil Mohammed in Point Pair, and Terry Jadunanan in Oropooch East, and Stuart Young in Port of Spain, North St. Anne's East, and Marlene McDonald in Port of Spain South, and Maxi Coffee as he is, and 
Abigail Nanlal, and anybody you want to name in the PNM, we are at work street by street, community by community, corner by corner, house by house, door by door, cottage meeting by cottage meeting, communicating with the people and saying to them, analyze our policies which we discuss with them. And one of the policies that Dr. Rowley will no doubt continue to speak about is how significant the local government reform is. But ladies and gentlemen, permit me in the short time that I have to quickly mention one aspect of policy that I want us to consider as a major election issue. As we, and we come back to a short description. You've heard where we were. You understand some of the money spent. You understand that the conversation can't only be that we are tired of the government. And you understand that the conversation is that the PNM offers some philosophy, a political process under a political leader with a capable team. And one of the aspects of policy that we're talking to tonight is the concept of crime and the concept of security. Because ladies and gentlemen, in 2010, you were told that the PNM could not manage crime. You were told that the Special Anti-Crime Unit was an illegal entity. You were told that the PNM's ability was going to be bettered by this government. In 100 days, they would have brought a solution. They were told that they would improve the criminal justice system. You were told that we would improve the judiciary, that we would have more jails, that we would have more courthouses. And we watched them for five years get about bringing legislation after legislation into the parliament. We were told that we needed to change the preliminary inquiry system. We were told that the jails are overflowing with people. We were told that you needed to have a new piece of law to help to reset the judiciary. And then, ladies and gentlemen, after we as a parliament engaged in legislative reform, we were introduced to one of the most vile acts ever perpetuated in a democracy. And that was a surreptitious, deceitful, wicked proclamation of one clause now referred to infamously as Section 34. And the entire structure for criminal justice reform went out the window. And ladies and gentlemen, I standing opposite the Attorney General then, Mr. Anand Ram Logan witnessed the government tell us that the jails in Trinidad and Tobago are in a good state, that they know at the last visit he had into Remand Yard, I believe it was, said that they were watching movies and they were growing Barbadeen. And yet today I read the newspapers and I watch the same man go into the courts to get a conservatory order to enter the prisons to take pictures and evidence for people beaten in jail cells. And I ask myself, where is the shame at least in that? And in Trinidad and Tobago, we were told that murder was something that was not to be tolerated and that they would improve the, the detection and conviction rate because when somebody is murdered, you want to know that the police the police service is working for you. They can detect crime. It can go to court. People can be convicted and they will serve the sentences to be carried out by law. But ladies and gentlemen, we're in 2015. And the government's detection and conviction rate out of every 100 murders and suicides the detection and conviction rate today is approximately 3%. 3 out of every 100 murders and suicides are discovered. Let's assume one man committed murder and then committed suicide. That's 2 out of the 3. 
So one out of 97 people is caught. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you some statistical facts. Fact number one, when the special anti-crime unit was in operation in Trinidad and Tobago, the Homicide Investigation Task Force had a 39% detection and conviction rate. Fact number two, the detection and conviction rate for gang activity was 69%. But ladies and gentlemen, you saw what happened. The Prime Minister rolled into Trinidad and Tobago. We were told we need a state of emergency. We locked up 7,000 plus people. We let go all of them. We had a state of emergency. We locked up Muslims. We let go all of them. And the war was not on the seas then. The war was on land. And the PNM didn't know what it was doing by having offshore patrol vessels. And they come now to tell you that those offshore patrol vessels were too expensive. When the fact is that the offshore patrol vessels would fly in tandem with helicopters and you'd be able to shut off your borders from the entry of drugs and the legacy items of guns and criminals that stay behind. But ladies and gentlemen, today in Trinidad and Tobago, Central Trinidad is gripped with a murderous gang warfare going on yes. and now it is not only hot spots pnm hot spots that they're focusing on and ladies and gentlemen what was the government's response to that rudal munilal asked the pnm about kidnapping dr munilal i want to tell you something under a pnm tenure kidnapping went down to zero we had a 100% track record on dealing with criminals involved in kidnapping. But ladies and gentlemen, what does the PNM say in relation to its policy for dealing with crime and for dealing with security? Part of it lies with a manpower audit. But that is preceded by making sure that you have a commissioner of police who is a permanent appointee, who is selected in a sensible process. And Dr. Rowley has already stated that one of the first acts that the PNM will be bringing forward is to bring forward sensible laws to hire a commissioner of police. Because a commissioner of police has constitutional clothing and has the responsibility to manage the police service. And it cannot be that we accept then Attorney General Anand Ram Logan's prescription that a commissioner of police, if he's acting, was a good thing because he could work harder so they could keep him acting. It can't be that. And secondly, the PNM says that a manpower audit is required and that an improvement of local government is required because our municipal police have an important role to play. The San Fernando City Corporation looks after part of Point Pair, San Fernando East, San Fernando West, part of Oropuch. Added together, it's close to 100,000 people. We have 25 municipal police officers. And those municipal police officers need to be at work in a structure, but we need more of them, ladies and gentlemen. It creates employment for people who are interested in that line of work. It allows for the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service to engage in the detection and conviction of crimes. And the PNM says that in an improved local government structure, we will be able to deal with that. Who are the community police that you see driving around? What laws govern them? And let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, the government, when it cried in opposition, when Mrs. Passard Bicessa cried in opposition that SORT was illegal, is using the same structure today to run the National Operation Center. And the budget of Trinidad and Tobago has the National Operation Center costing for operations only close to $80 million a year, excluding national security under the office of the Prime Minister. 
And ladies and gentlemen, the PNM says by way of further policy prescription that we must introduce whistleblowing legislation because unless there is accountability and consequence for deviant actions, our society will continue to be on a slippery slope downward and we have no chance of recovery. But how do you detect and convict a crime if the people who are willing to come and give evidence and stand as witnesses suffer the consequences? How many of you recall life sport? Do you recall the whistleblowers who came forward, one of them shot dead with bullets in his bed next to his wife? Do you recall then Minister of National Security Gary Griffith telling the country on the one hand, life sport has criminal elements feeding the Carapo gangs and the whole government, including Mrs. Passard Bicessa, saying no? What happened next? It wasn't me. I'll take two pull and everything forgotten. <laughs> Apparently, it may not have been Tupol only. But ladies and gentlemen, we say that whistleblowing legislation to protect people, to allow them to come forward and give evidence is critical. We also say that the criminal justice system would be very usefully aided by looking at the benefits of anonymous witness evidence. But ladies and gentlemen, it isn't as if some of these things we say now which will be expanded in our manifesto hasn't been said by us before because under Dr. Keith Rowley he told us as parliamentarians those of us who've had the privilege to serve so far he told us we will not play political football with national security or the, or the state of the economy they are too important we will step up to the plate and offer the government ideas if they have none we will support legislation that they bring forward that makes sense. And we, as a political party, under Dr. Rowley's guidance, have through hard work and fixing a lot of bad legislation brought to the parliament, we have supported in the Senate close to 96.7% of the laws brought forward. Is that the mark of an irresponsible party under an irresponsible leader? When the UNC's track record in opposition was to oppose everything, good or bad or not, the ridiculous system for the appointment of a commissioner of police is a UNC product brought about by way of their insistence of what had to be included in the legislation and the system and process. And ladies and gentlemen, we say in San Fernando East, in San Fernando West, in Pointe-a-Pere, in Oropooch East, even Oropooch West, in Diego Martin West, Central East, South Port of Spain, North Port of Spain, in the East, in Arima, in Charlottesville, wherever it may be, in Central Trinidad, in Chaguanas, we say everybody deserves to have crime dealt with seriously. And we say that the municipal police forces have to be improved and the manpower audit of the police must be done so you can identify the resources and you have to have a system of accountability and you cannot convict anybody unless you start off with a witness, ladies and gentlemen. So, Trinidad and Tobago, what is at stake? Our lives, our communities, what is the PNM doing about it? Where has Randall Mitchell been in the several months since he was announced as our choice for candidate? Where have I been since the announcement in November? We have been on the ground working community by community, street by street, corner by corner, house by house. But our opponents, yet to be identified, are very comfortable having no one to oppose us. And by the time they do their horse trading, another candidate opposite any one of us has six or five weeks to run against us. How do they walk street by street, home by home, door by door, community by community? Ask yourselves whether election fraud is a real potential in this country and ask yourselves what you're going to do about it because as I wrap up, I want to tell you in San Fernando West, we are aware 
of the polling cards that come to homes for people that never lived there. And we are aware that we, San Fernando East and West, share polling stations for demolished schools right here. Where are people going? And we are aware that people in our impoverished communities are being identified to say, take a $5,000, take a $1,000, Dip your finger in the ink before you vote so you spoil your vote. But we are sure that Trinidad and Tobago is brighter than that. And we are sure that people are more decent than that. And in any event, we are diligent enough to be watching out for it. And we intend, Randall as he's a lawyer, I as I'm a lawyer, Neil Mohammed as he has a law degree, Terry Jadunanan, as he has a, as he is a lawyer as well. All four of us in law, not by mistake, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to sell our careers and not make sure we apply the law right here. And who brave enough to commit electoral fraud? I hope you like the sentence to follow that. So, ladies and gentlemen, this election is about diligence. It's about hard work. It's about philosophy. It's about policy. And the reason why. We four in our pack, and I'm naming them as we share boundaries, Neil Mohammed, yeah. Randall Mitchell, Terry Jadunanan, and I, why we move forward as a team, and why we're able to tell the country that they should vote for PNM on intelligent issue analysis, on proper policy reform, but more particularly because we are a coordinated pack, because the greatest example of successful volunteerism exists right here in the PNM. We are a party, 60 years old now we are. Proud as we are standing on the shoulders of those who have come before us, but we continue to thrive because we've chosen excellent leaders and we are diligent and honest and faithful in our pursuit. So ladies and gentlemen, come September 7th, wake up early in the morning, Say your prayers to God Almighty and then bring everybody out. It is not over until the election results come in. Be diligent, be prudent, be honest. Fear our God Almighty and have faith in a better life under a distinguished leader. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Great is the PNM. Great is the PNM. Great is the PNM and we shall and will prevail. Thank you.